happen at the end of the age. The seed shrivels under the clods, storehouses are in a shambles, barns are broken down for the grain has withered. How the animals groan. The herds of cattle are restless because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep suffer punishment. Oh, Lord. And this, guys, I, I really, this is kind of the voice of the prophet, the voice of Joel right now. Listen to him. He says, oh, Lord, to you I cry out. He's seeing, I love it. Oh, I love it when you see the, the, the passion and zeal of the prophet come out. The character of the man of the prophet comes out. And he's like, he cuts, he cuts off the prophecy to cry out to God. He says, oh, Lord, to you I cry out. You know, for fire has devoured, devoured the open pastures. And a flame has burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field also cry out to you. For the water brooks are dried up and the fire has devoured the open pastures. So chapter 2, there were no breaks in these prophecies. This was one letter, one scroll, one writing. And he would say right off the bat here, remember we saw this in Hosea two or three times. We're going to count how many times we see this through the book of the prophets, the books of the prophets. Blow the trumpet in Zion, the sound and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Well, again, why did he do that, guys? You guys remember in Hosea? What, what did I said? What I said that was for? Remember the three blasts of the trumpet that we talked about? There was an advancing in war. There was gathering into the congregation, and there was a sound of straight up alarm, like you're being attacked. And in this case, you're being attacked by locusts. What are you gonna do? <laughs> You're going to probably assemble. So in this case, you know, the trumpets would be to assemble as well. They are, he's already said, gather in the house of the God. Assemble. Call a sacred assembly. Get together. Get on your face. Cry out to God. You're in trouble. Warning, warning everywhere. Warning, warning in the air. You know, this is not okay. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains, a people come great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will ever be any such after them, even for many successive generations. You guys, um, this could be speaking of several things. Um, he starts to fade into, you're even, you're kind of like wondering about the Babylonian exile. You're kind of wondering about the Romans. The Romans were known to just swarm into an area. Um, it's funny, the Romans had a lot of things to say about locusts themselves. They, they almost kind of patterned themselves after locusts. They came with such huge, vast, swarming armies that no one stood in their way. I don't know if you know much about the history of the Romans. A uh, really good, really good movie to look at is the opening scene, the Gladiator. Uh, really, I mean, you look at that and you're like, yeah. "My goodness, they are burning and destroying everything." And what doesn't get burnt and destroyed, they kill with a sword. Yeah. You know, you're like, "All right, who, who's going to stand in that that thing's yeah, way?" Opening, huh? So I think there's a neat juxtaposition. When I use the word juxtaposition, when you couple two things together, you juxtapose, you put them together. You've kind of got this, this army that could be Babylonian, maybe Romans in the distance. And, guys, don't forget about Ezekiel's prophecies about Russia and maybe a conglomerate of like China and things. Like the, these, these invading armies in the last days that Ezekiel talks about. So, again, there could be two, three things spoken of. And um, you could be seeing things that, that happen in this that, that could be several different things. But ultimately, there's going to be one army. There's going to be an invading, an invasion of, of armies or ar an army that is unlike anything that's ever been seen before. And which that, when it talks about that, I would lend that to say that it was probably the Ezekiel um, prophecy. So the, a fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Again, this is what locusts do. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance like the appearance of horses, and their swift steeds, so they run, and like swift steeds, so they run. With a noise like chariots, over mountaintops they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Again, he's describing this locust plague. Guys, let's... 
let's let's stop for a second here. I want to read some facts about locusts. Locusts, again, like I said earlier, move in the billions and not the millions. Um, their swarms or plagues can be detected by radar. That's how. Oh, you're reading. We're reading about darkness and gloom and clouds covering the mountains. These things would look like dark black clouds moving in over. They would block the sunlight. Oh my God. That, that's, it's, it's just phenomenal. When they lay eggs, guys, listen to this. this. This is the grossest thing I think I read. When they lay eggs, they rank in the 50 to 60,000 per square meter. Ooh. Per square meter. Ooh. That's a lot of eggs. Like yeah. Yeah, a square meter is not much bigger than this table right here. That's Maybe two of these tables put together. Eggs. When they hatch, just listen, when they hatch, the ground can be seen literally moving oh my with, word. With, with life and, and stuff. I'm, I'm serious. When they hit an area of crops or vineyards, listen to this, when they hit an area of crops or vineyards or plants, hundreds of tons of food can disappear extremely quickly, sometimes in a matter of hours. <laughs> Hundreds of tons of food. Diseases can be caused just by the carcasses and husks of these creatures rotting and infecting everything. Diseases. So not only do they eat everything and so there's a famine. You know, famine is a loss of food, right? But their husks and their, their little carcasses and shells and stuff can do all kinds of things. Um, when, when they finally die and they run out of things to eat, or a storm blows them out to sea, the, the bodies can pile up, the dead locust bodies can pile up to be feet thick. Like one, one thing uh, I heard about, they were four foot thick. Listen to this. They were four foot thick on a beach for 50 miles. Four feet, man. That's like, let's say it's even three, okay? Gross. The Romans called them, the Romans called them the burning ones. The burning ones. They scorched the earth as much or more than any army ever could. Calm down, Seth. Sorry. They're not coming for us. It's just our country going to pot. That's all we have to worry about. I'm just, I'm just, you know, the realization. I'm only like five foot here, you know? Yeah, the four foot? Yeah, it's pretty, it's nasty. I mean, we're looking, we're looking at something that is absolutely awful, you know, and, 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 and what, what's crazy about this, you guys, what's crazy about this is this isn't even the bad point. This isn't even what's really bad about this. What's really bad about this is this is just a foreshadow of real armies coming of what is really going to happen to the land in the time of Jacob's trouble in the great and awesome day of the Lord. Um, this is what will really happen. But this was kind of a prophetic scene. This was something to show us, oh, pay attention, because this might happen. This will happen again. Before them, the people writhe in pain. Verse 6 of chapter 2. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation. Again, Proverbs 30, 27 kind of talks about that. The locust, The locusts, you know, there's nobody controlling them but God and are allowing them to do what they do. And they move in perfect formation. They look like an army. I mean, if you even look at a locust, it looks like some kind of battle insect, you know? It, it, they're, they're just crazy looking. John the Baptist was munching on them. And John the Baptist <laughs> ate them for food. Yes, thank you. Um, you guys remember... Um, Revelation, even like the picture of Revelation, you can look at um, their appearance in verse 4. It said their appearance is like the appearance of horses, like swift steeds. Um, Revelation has this creature that we see, um, and it, it's like they're like locusts, they're like horses with women's hair and a scorpion tail. And there's all these like creepy, gross, you know, creature looking things. Some people think that that could be like a helicopter. Um, I mean, so Apache. This is Apache. Sizzle Senior, you won't die. Just like after I, I don't know, man. I don't What's know. Well, the fact that they won't die is, is probably something that's miraculous. H1N1. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> hit, hit <laughs> <it>. <laughs> you just got hit with a flu bomb. 
Um, all right, let's let's keep going here. They do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. Now, you could keep going with the locust thing here, but you could also keep going with, like, special forces. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, these guys that are just, like, repelling down things and busting in windows, just shooting everybody. That's what I started thinking. I, I did, too. Like, immediately I was like, ah. Oh. Something like ninja special ops. Yeah, like, a ninja, you got ninjas, you got special ops, you got, you know, repelling guys off of helicopters, you got... I mean, maybe maybe that's what we're looking at. I'm not, guys, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord. I'm not saying that. That's exactly what it is. But you're starting to get this, like, swarming army feeling as much as you're getting the swarming locust thing. They're, they're, they're so close together. Um, they enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. Maybe if there were tanks, that would happen. The sun and moon grew dark, and the stars diminished their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army. Whoa, kind of switches here a little bit. For his camp is very great. Let's talk about God here. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? Now, we all kind of believe that, you know, we are the bride of Christ and, and um, the Lord will protect his bride. Um, he's going to bring, he's going to bring the bride to a safe place in all of this. Um, a lot of, a lot of us see, you know, we see the rapture as pulling us out of the way. Um, and then even his Jewish people halfway through the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, hiding them away in, in the, in the cleft of the rock, you know, in the rock city of Petra. A lot of people say a Petra, which is in Jordan, um, you know, who can endure it? I'll tell you, who the, only, the only people who are going to endure this kind of stuff is, guys, is people who are protected by the blood of the Lamb. People who are known by their Christ and by their bridegroom and people whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the only people. Who can endure this? Now we're talking about the end of all things again. Chapter 3, guys. Chapter 3 is like the, whoa, this is awesome. He's going to... He's going to go from absolute death and destruction with a locust plague and invading armies to bring us all the way through the baptizing of the Spirit and then into the things to come. So chapter 3 is like the up and up. It's like so many of these books. You're like, ah! And then you end and you're like, oh man, thank God. <laughs> you know, you actually get to a place where it's, it's sweet. Um,